Brad, coming off the these last two games, where do you see this team right now as you're halfway through this or not this homestand as it uh, with a road game in between? Yeah, listen, we see it as a journey, right? Um, for us, it's just the next game and the next three points, and now we've got back to back, and we knew that we needed a good home stretch, um, and we got off to that really well, uh, you know, against Sporting KC. Um, and obviously we knew against Vancouver is going to be a tricky opponent, a really difficult opponent, um, and we came through that one. Um, so you can see based on results last night, uh, Vancouver is a really good team, right? So just to put that into perspective, to put that into what we got going on, you know, uh, it's just, uh, yeah, it's the next three points and the next journey. Did you sit down last night with a notepad and a thing of popcorn and watch the Vancouver No, I think it, we wouldn't have seen anything we wouldn't have seen before uh, based on games prior. So we obviously look at different opponents who poses them different problems. So, you know, um, Vancouver was a good one because they're pretty active against the ball these days and very good in transition. So obviously we look at that as well. Um, and they took their chances, you know, they, they scored some bangers. Um, so they shoot from anywhere, uh, did Vancouver, Gressel, you know, uh, but again, it's not, it's not my job to talk about that game. It's us to focus on the next game. So, yeah, for sure we got some good detail, but it's nothing we hadn't seen before. And what's the situation with Alm and Klaus? Yeah, um, you know, Klaus did part one of training today. Alm was fully integrated in the group. Um, so, you know, he's, he's eligible um, and uh, available um, to travel or to, tr to dress, um, I would say. Uh, Klaus is, is, we'll have to see one more day, but uh, it might be a, a game too soon. Um, and then we've got to think about turning around for, for Wednesday. So we've got a you know, big week coming up. Go ahead, Santi. Bradley, Houston, in terms of results, um, hasn't been great playing away. But can you talk about what challenges they can bring on Saturday? Well, they've, you know, again, there's a couple of question marks, right? They have a big Open Cup game coming up. Uh, you know, they have a lot of, lot of travel. Uh, they played a full starting lineup last night. Do they bounce back guys? Do they make changes? Do they, you know, but what I can say is everyone in that roster are very good, accomplished technical soccer players, right? So they can change a game uh, with an individual play. Uh, you know, they're pretty dangerous and savvy around the box. Um, you know, they can make final plays and uh, they, they earn a lot of fouls in and around our danger areas defensively. So, you know, whether it's free kicks, uh, Hector Herrera is really good on the ball. So, you know, this game could be a, a very tight affair and decided on a set piece. Um, so, you know, I'm sure we've earned a lot of respect on, on the set piece uh, department side of things. And uh, so have they with, with Herrera. So there's a lot of things going for them in that, in that department. Um, you know, they played some guys 60 minutes uh, last night. They might change those guys back around and get them going again. Again, I don't know we can control what we can control. Um, but all I know is they have a very good roster. And, and uh, Ben Olsen, uh, you know, he's a guy who likes to bring a little grit and, and desire to his teams as well, not just uh, the technical side of it. So uh, whatever lineup I puts, he puts out there, I'm sure it's going to be a competitive one. Go ahead, Matt. Ben Olsen teams have they've coined the term Benny Ball, very defensive-minded. So how do you feel that you match up against that, especially after the last couple of games where we've kind of seemed to see a better offensive outburst? Yeah, good. I mean, again, I don't know where their pickup points will be, uh, whether they'll sit on top of their box or midfield or, you know, camp on out top of our box. Will they try and, you know, stop our build-up play? Will they try and stop the final third entry play? So, again, we've we've exercised for every bit of that aspect this week, and uh, we've catered for all departments, and we feel ready and comfortable um, and have a good attacking plan. And what I can say is the more reps we get, um, especially at home with this crowd, with the electric uh, energy around here, you know, making that run where we like to get some movement off the ball, we like to get movement un underneath. We, you know, we have some good understandings and good relationships now. You know, we've had a couple of back-to-back -back lineups, um, so there's not too much uh, changing uh, going on. So from that aspect, I think it's a lot more fluid uh, than recent weeks, and we're excited about this game. And then you mentioned the fixture congestion that Houston's going through. You've kind of been on the other end of that, whether it's uh, an opponent where you haven't played the full game or LAFC's CCL. Uh, do you feel like these few games where you've had a week to rest have been more must-win because of what's to come in June? No, I don't think so. I mean, I just think it's, it's another chance for us, right? We know that we have a bank or like a, a couple of games in hand at home, right? So, and we know that if you look at the, the, I mean, I don't look at the table too often, but we have two games up on some opponents, right? And we're still where we are. So, but I think our group likes a bit of pressure, 
You know, I think we like playing under a bit of pressure. I think we, we know at times when we challenge each other internally, despite what the outside world is looking at, that's why we have internal targets, internal challenges for us, and we drive internal competition. So that's very important for us because we've put ourselves in this situation. How do we keep the fire burning? How do we keep the desire going, right? So the minute we get too comfortable and complacent, uh, that's never a good thing. So for us to win the next game, the next three points, the next game at, uh, at home. So these little challenges we put on ourselves along the way, um, I think we do well under a little bit of our own pressure. This is, this is right along the same, li same line. I can't think there's a coach anywhere in the world, any level, that wouldn't be ecstatic about seven goals for one against over the last two games. How do you put that in perspective? And I think that's what you were just talking about, but maybe if you could expand on that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, listen, we speak about the fluidity. We speak about, you know, guys sticking to a process. We, you know, we have a core principles in place with and without the ball. Um, and to see those come to fruition. And then you add some set piece details as well. We know what we have in Edu Leuven. We know what we have with guys running in the box, you know, who's really dangerous on set pieces, uh, whether it's a Carl Hebert, Tim Parker, Lucas Bartlett, you know. Um, yeah, Indy plays a great ball in as well. So we have good variability, flexibility uh, with that. Um, and again, it's just about, not, I wouldn't say committing to the cause and trusting the process, but it's just to keep on, you know, grinding out what you believe in, right? And we, be we believe in this core identity that we have from the very beginning and, uh, you know, when we when we when we need players or we you know when we always say we're missing a striker or we're missing this or we're missing that we always seem to find a way and that's a sign of a good team when you always seem to find a way Go ahead, Justin. coach i know kyle heber didn't come to the team with the most fanfare but he's been able to kind of plug in wherever you need him and really develop as a player what is it about kind of your training style that lets a player like that get to the point where he's named to the Canadian national team preliminary roster again? Yeah, I think Tim Parker could be the best one to answer that, right? And I know maybe he's in the room a little bit later. Um, I've worked with Tim many times. And, and if you work with a profile of a player, of a character on and off the field, uh, with a guy who's willing to do everything and knows that he can learn and adapt and, and uh, grow as a player, um, a real growth mindset, you know, and, and he can be really good with the ball, breaking line passes, you know, into midfield. Um, we don't expect him now as a left back to be bombing forward, uh, you know, um, like Robertson for Liverpool, for example, you know, uh, getting all the assists, but he does his job. Um, and he's athletic on the back line and he's a good, uh, solid aerially uh, defensively, you know, his, his tackles, his, uh, his duels, everything's right up there, you know, in the league. So, um, he just commits again to the process and, and shows what he's capable of. And I believe if you keep your keep your head down and, and doing the hard work, you'll get rewarded and get um, yeah you get the recognition. So and I think he's on that pathway. Next we'll go to John Lupo if he's still there. I was say on Kyle, now you've played him at center back, left back, and right back. Any any other options for him? Move him up into the midfield? Right wing back. He played right. last yeah. week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So right wing back was another one yeah. um, for a couple of minutes at the end there. Yeah. Uh, again, you know, we believe in, in a plug and play system. There's many guys that uh, uh, that can play many different positions. Um, you know, you speak about Jared Stroud. You know, there's a couple of our all rounders. Indy Vassilev is the same one. Edu Leuven, you can plug him just about anywhere. Uh, Celio Pompeo can play a right back. He can play left winger. Um, so yeah, really happy with. And again, it's it's not it's nothing tactical. It's more principally based. Mm -hmm. If the guys stick to principles, I believe they can play any position. On the odd chance we talk to Tim Parker later if he shows up, the the. The, the impact he's had and the, the effect as a guy who has known this system, having no, played with you before, having him there as this team learns in its first yeah, year. Yeah, I wouldn't say it's an identical system. I would say there's, uh, you know, fringes of similarities. Um, I've tried to expand a little bit. I've tried to, you know, expand my horizon as a coach uh, a little bit more and, and try and push myself to get better uh, with the ball uh, as well. So it's been a great challenge for me. Um, and how efficient we can be um, in the transition. So, you know, there's a lot of things that are similar uh, on the on the surface, but you know, going into the detail, there are a few a few changes. Does it help having? Some yeah, hundred percent. I mean, from a leadership locker room perspective, from you know, just knowing it and, and knowing it's tough, right? Knowing this way to play is really tough. And and it's funny, you know, we had the highest meters covered as a team in the last game, 
and we were a little bit more, I would say in our mid to compact block, we ran more meters than ever, right? So if we're really all out, we actually run less because it's shorter distances to travel, you know? So a short sprint is way better than a long 60 yard track back, you know, uh, when, when a line gets broken or we, the pressure gets broken. So, you know, staying true to our principles and being really aggressive is actually a more efficient way of playing. You use the same lineup for the first time all year, twice in a row. Is it worked out that way or did you like that previous game? Yeah, the minute you can, you know, start scratching shutouts and, and you know, being controlled uh, or being in control, these are always good moments for a coach. So to go, you know, as controlled as we did in the last game out and then again, you're leading 2-0. Um, yeah, you concede, you know, a goal at the end. but. Um, I think for many moments you speak about control um, and, and consistency. And I think those are two words that a coach would love to, to hear more often. So, you know, I felt we're getting to those moments where we feel more in control and more consistent. Coach, uh, John Lupo wanted to ask about Miggy's uh, play and what areas uh, he's been able to throw since he uh, became a substitute against us. Yeah, before I'd speak about that, I would speak about guys we brought on, right? So AZ makes the play, you know, he wins the ball at midfield, drives forward, uh, gets the foul, right? So then uh, Edu takes the free kick and Thomas Ostrak really savvy play to hold his line. He could have just run off sides, the ball gets you know, rebounded or parried away and Thomas would have been offside. So it's a real savvy play from Thomas. So just speaking about contributions from everybody who came in and did a job. So Mig is the end product, the byproduct, right? Of, of scoring the goal and doing great things. But there's, there's a whole lot more in the surface or between the layers. So. Really proud of the group as well. And then, you know, you speak about, yes, Miggy uh, scores the goal, which is awesome, right? Has his graduation, scores the goal. Many great things as a young pro is just, you know, getting to scratch the surface of what it means to be a pro. And, and it's our job to guide him and nurture him. And he's got a gr good group of core individuals here who help him along his way. And it's never going to be all easy because the more recognition he gets, the harder life becomes. So, you know, it's for us now to keep him, you know, guided also in times of, you know, ment mentally toughness, you know, just to keep going the, the, the path that's true and straight. So um, it's a good challenge for everybody around here, but yeah, rather these ones than having negative ones. <laughs> So you're attacking depth. Um, Klaus, Alm working their way back to fitness. Stroud's out now. Without specifically asking about players slotted in, do you feel like there are some who have separated themselves and are more ready to step into those roles? No, I think we're just having a, a turn off or a run of games now where we had the Open Cup run and we rotated a little bit and then obviously we kicked out and, and guys now start getting a rhythm of games and the League's Cup is just around the corner. Guys have committed to City too. We see, um, you know, it's great to see players and staff there on the weekends on a Sunday watching City 2 players plus four or five of our first team guys, right? So um, it's always a collective right and that's what we've always prided ourselves on is being the collective and seeing guys get minutes there keeps them sharper fitter i mean john bell's another prime example you know he's looking really sharp in training this week and uh, he's doing really well so um yeah i believe you get rewarded you know use every platform and this is our message to the group use every platform possible to to better yourself better your career and and make yourself ready you know you need to be ready at all times because it's hard for us to judge as coaches on game day when it means the most in the MLS in eight minutes when you come in, right? So rather get 90 minutes at City 2 and commit to the process and everyone's, you know, winning in that aspect and gaining sharpness, gaining, gaining fitness, getting a good rhythm, a good routine. So, yeah, I think that's, that's very important for everybody to, to be ready. So I feel we have a good rotation coming up in the next couple of weeks again. So it just never seems to stop and that's the greatness of or the competitive nature of this league. Coach, thank you for joining us. All right. Thank you. Indy, have you gotten enough credit for drawing the foul that set up Leuven's free kick uh, last week? <laughs> uh, I've got my fair amount of comments, I'll say, yeah. uh, two weeks ago, whatever it was. Yeah. You made it possible. Doesn't happen without. Yeah, I mean, but that starts from I think Tim steps in from center back steps in was one of our principles, and then we had good combination play, and then I uh, went to Edu back to Nico, and Nico lays it off very nicely for me, and I just try and put my foot in, and yeah, we got a penalty. Mm. Yeah. Where do you see the team offensively? Seven goals now in mm -hmm. in two weeks. Are you guys 
were, were we overstating the problems before on scoring goals or how's it look? Um, listen, it, it always feels good to score goals and we have been quite successful in the past two games. Um, having said that, you know, we'd love to have more attacking options. I, we do have injuries now, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, it feels good to score goals. Um, and some of them might have been lucky, but I think you, you create your own luck. So, uh, you know, we'll take what we can get, but yeah, seven goals in two games feels good. Has it been enjoyable to stretch your games at home, not having to go on a plane in a while? Yeah, hundred percent. Uh, I mean, playing away in this league is very hard. Um, but our, our home here is the, like Bradley likes to say, it's like a fortress for us, and, and, and we love playing here, and we love playing in front of our fans. Um, and, yeah, it's much easier just to not hop on that plane. Yeah. In the last few games, you have been playing uh, as offensive midfielder. Uh, you also played defensive midfielder at the beginning of the season. And I know you will say that you will play wherever the coach mm -hmm. tells you to play, but can you talk a little bit about how you feel playing offensive midfielder the last few weeks? Yeah, I mean, it feels good. It's probably, my, I'd say, my natural position. So, I mean, it feels good to play there. Um, but like you said, I'll play anywhere the coach wants you to play. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's been nice. We've, we've had success, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, we'll try and continue that success. But at the end of the day, you know, if, if I'm told to play a different role, you know, I'm completely fine with that. In the past couple of games, it seems like you and Nico Giochini have kind of found a rhythm uh, in particular. He, he seems to know where you're going to be at any given moment, back heel passes. Mm -hmm. Can you speak a little bit about the relationship you've built with him? Uh, yeah, I mean, we just, I mean, we kind of just build, you know, build chemistry throughout the training week, and it's kind of started since we came in, um, and now I'm playing closer to him, so it's kind of, you know, more important to have a better, you know, or have more chemistry with him. Um, and yeah, you know, it's 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 been building up quite nicely in the past, you know, couple of games, and uh, you know, hopefully, going to look to continue that. But um, uh, but yeah, I mean, I I'd like to say I have chemistry with everybody on the team. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I guess it's like better in the past two games because we've done well. Uh, but yeah. And then, do you see anything uh, from Houston that you can take advantage of, or what are your thoughts going into the game? Ah, uh, yeah, they're a good team. Um, I think we had a debrief this, this morning. We'll have a debrief tomorrow morning about them. But um, I think we're more focused on, you know, what we need to do to, uh, you know, kind of focus on our principles. And if we do that, I think we'll be competitive, which is what we want to be. We'll try again with John. Can you hear me better now? Sure can. Okay. Indy, just with some of your key players out with injury and all of that, talk about just the contributions that everybody made. Nico stepped up. Edward's had... Uh, some great success. You've scored a couple of goals. You've had some of the young guys step in, like Miguel, mm -hmm. and do some great things. Just talk about all the team contributions that you've been able to get in the absence of Klaus and Alm and all of those players. Yeah, listen, it's been great. I, I don't think it's been surprising um, from from our side, just because we see, uh, you know, Every day that we train, it's, it's very competitive, um, and we have full trust in every single player that we have on this team. Um, so yeah, I mean, it's it's been nice to see, but I, I wouldn't say it's been surprising, um, just because of that, you know, internal competition and that edge we play with and we train with every single day. Um, it, it, it hasn't been surprising, but it has been nice to see. Go ahead, Kevin. Hey, Andy, um, just. Over the last um, few weeks, what do you think um, you guys have been doing um, better as a team, whether it's during training, during the games, that has seen that has um, led to the results that you guys have been getting of late? I think we've just been playing with more of an edge and kind of looking more like ourselves, uh, being more energetic at the start of games and putting teams under pressure and uh, kind of building on momentum from uh, from the start of the game. Um and you know, I think I, I, as we've as we've seen this season, you know, once we once we've gained momentum, it's it's um, it's kind of hard to stop us. I, I would I would like to say. Um, so yeah, we've kind of been good at getting on the front foot early on and kind of keeping our foot on the gas. Um, having said that, there are still things we need to work on. Uh, let's say the start of the second half to kind of keep on going. Um, but I think that has uh, kind of led to our success early in games. I should say. Does anybody run more than you? Does anybody get knocked down more than you? I think so, yeah. I think uh, I 
think Edu runs more than me every single game. Um, Jabs does. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure about tackles, but uh, you're I, in the mix. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I try and I try and be in the mix. You know, try and try and. Uh, I mean, I, I don't try and win fouls, but you know, <laughs> if somebody kicks me, I'm probably gonna go down. And um, yeah. quickly, explain just a little bit more uh, about your relationship, your developing relationship with Adu, because it it's fun to watch. Mm -hmm. I'll say that. Yeah, uh, yeah. I it's it's easy to play with players who understand the game very well. He's a very smart player. Um, very clever, so uh, I think it's easy not only for me but for everybody to play with him, um, because he's so clever and he's technically very good. And I don't want to sit up here and give him too many compliments because I don't want him to watch this. But uh, but yeah, it's it, it's easy to play with a player who's you know as good as he is. I'll say that. Yeah. Thank you. Tim, you're no stranger to playing against former teams. What have those experiences been like in the past, and what do you think Saturday would be like? Yeah, you know, it's always nice to see um, some guys that you had spent time with in the past. So um, it doesn't take away from the game moments, but it's nice to see guys that you had played with and had relationships with before. Were, were any of those teams still paying you at the time? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Did you watch last night's Houston game? And since you probably know Houston better than anyone here, maybe even Brad, depending, tell us about them. Yeah, yeah, I watched the game last night. Um, I think if you watched the first 20 minutes or so, you were able to see how dangerous they, that they could be because they created a lot of chances, although they gave up two goals as well, but they created a lot of chances. So for us, there's going to be moments that we're going to have to manage in terms of when they're in their attack, how we can limit it and how we can kind of – um, counter it and stop it, but there's going to be moments as well that we can kind of take advantage of too. Go ahead, Matt. Tim, as kind of vice captain, obviously, of the team and leader of the back line, what are your thoughts in how you've seen the back line develop between Hebert's flexibility, Lucas Bartlett taking a more starring role? Just what are your thoughts on how that's evolved? Yeah, yeah, it's been great. You know, I think obviously everyone in this team wants to be able to play. So I think the ability for guys to continue to push each other in training week to week and then have results on the weekends um, to, to build confidence, to build rhythm, to um, just continue to build competition within the group. You know, I think that that's a really good thing because it brings a standard up as well. Uh, over the past week, uh, one of the comments made by Vancouver's keeper, Hassel, was that the own goal was a result of the noise at City Park. He wasn't able to be heard with his back line. Do you feel, how do you feel that that impacts you on the field, and what are your overall thoughts about just kind of the home crowd as it's kind of grown through the season? Yeah, um, thanks for the compliment, I'd say. Uh, but yeah, you know, I think communicating can be tough when it's that loud. You know, so you kind of have to communicate up the field as you go. You know, I, I said it the other day where it's one of those things where you try to communicate your messages to the people around you, and then you try to echo them up the field um, by passing them on. It's not always, you know, me screaming at Indy who's 30 yards up the field. He probably won't be able to hear everything I'm saying. So um, if you're able to do it in a smart way and kind of communicate as quick as possible, and that's the best. Tim, you mentioned you, you watched the game last night. Have you been keeping an eye on what Houston has been doing this season? And if you have, how different are they from last season? Um, to be honest, I haven't really been. Um, I've watched a couple of their games, um, but usually they play around the same time as us. So uh, last night I got the opportunity to watch them. It, like I said, it's always nice to see some of your friends play. Um, so that was really all, but that's kind of as much as I got to watch. And is this a game you have been looking forward to or you treat it as another game? Um, no, not necessarily. I think I just treat it as another game. You know, uh, for me, uh, like I said, coming to St. Louis City, uh, it's been a blessing. So I'm excited to be here and um, it's looking pretty good. Tim, could you speak to the level of understanding and camaraderie team that you're experiencing here at this point of the season compared to other stops in your career? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty interesting. You know, I think the, the camaraderie for sure is there. You know, I think um, it's been a really good year in terms of 
how we've been able to gel so quickly and how we've gotten along with it really well. But at the same time, the challenges that we present to one another week to week are also are also kind of surprising, but interesting. You know, I'd like to say that just because we win a game doesn't mean that the locker room is always happy the next day, you know, and I think that that's a good thing because it, it means that we want more, you know, and I think um, setting that kind of a high standard and pushing each other week in and week out is going to create a good thing. We'll go to John Lupo. Uh, Tim, everyone knows how good this team is offensively, but the last few games you, you've allowed two goals in the last three games. Also this year you held opposing Cincinnati club to one goal. You held Colorado on the road to one goal where it's always difficult to play. So just, you mentioned how this back line has been gelling. Just talk about the growth the back line has had where you've now been able to get more results consistently defensively. Yeah, yeah, I think the growth is a part of, as the year goes along, the gelling kind of comes together and so does the, um, so does the chemistry. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to lie to you and say I wish we gave up less goals, you know, and I think there's a lot of things that we can work on. So um, that's going to be obviously an ongoing process for us. Um, we're not going to sit here and set the standard too high, but there's definitely things that we can work on as a group. And uh, as a back line, that's something that we've addressed. And it's it's a good thing to have the whole 11 to defending. You know, it's not just the back line. We defend as a unit. So um, everyone ties into that. As summer begins to arrive here in St. Louis and it gets hot, and you are no stranger to this from Houston, where it may well have been worse. What, what were your ways? To, say so. Yeah. <laughs> what are your ways of, of, of getting through, of playing, and being at the top of your game in a grueling summer? A lot of sunscreen. Yeah. Uh, a lot of water. Yeah. You know, I think obviously playing in the summertime in the in the heat when you're, if you're used to it or not, it's never easy. So there comes a lot of times when you have to know your body and. Um, for me, I think that was a hard thing to realize when I was down in Houston, but um, now that I got used to it a little bit, there's, there's ways to know your body and know when you need to recover, what you need to do to get ready for Saturday. Um, and there's a lot of different recovery and, recovery and modalities that we have available at the training facility that can help us with that. And, and what's the, um, how difficult will it be to play this style of game over a long summer? Um, I don't think it'll be that difficult. You know, I think we've, we've developed little, little nuances and little kinks to it that can, we can adjust on depending upon who we're playing and where we're playing and what we're doing. So game in week, week in, week out, there's little things that we can change, but over the course of the summer, you know, every team has to go through it. So whether they want to sit back and let us play or we want to play our game, I think we're going to, we're going to enjoy playing our game our way. Any idea how much water you consume in a, you know, on a day during the summer? Um, I usually drink like four liters. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it seems that this okay, expansion team, first year, in the top three of the table consistently in the first year, that the culture of this team is like, this team has been here for five, 10 years. How can you explain that? Um, yeah, I guess this, I'll give the credit to Brad and Lutz. Um, you know, and I think, I think it is. You know, I think a lot of the things that they've done is brought in guys that are hungry for success, are hungry to learn, and are hungry to, and are hungry to win. And I think that when you bring a lot of those guys together and they have that common goal and they have the guidance of the coaching staff and the sporting director, you know, you get a lot of good results. And I think... In that, inside that locker room, sure, there's a lot of guys that wish they were playing, but you know, at the same time, they understand the journey of what the MLS season is. It's a long season, so they know that they'll get their opportunity at one point, and hopefully they'll be able to take advantage of it. Anybody else for Tim? I know this, you hear this a lot, but I don't think you, you can possibly hear this enough, is speak to what the feeling you get when the fans really kick in here? I mean, is that just, does that lift you in a way? Does it energize you? What, what's that like when you hear that collective roar? Yeah, it, it's awesome. You know, I think it's something, uh, I look forward to the end of the anthem all the time because uh, that's when all the fans kind of jump in and, and, and say something. So, but yeah, you know, and it's one of those things too that 
I've had the the luxury or the experience of playing in places where it's not very loud or the the fans aren't very good. So being able to play here is it, it is that luxury. And all the guys that I've played against against other teams have come here and they say what an incredible atmosphere it is. So that's definitely something that we we hold true. Like Cardinals baseball. Yes. Tim, Bradley mentioned that you guys have internal metrics you follow for, for the team, and I know how competitive you are as a player and how each one of the players are. Do you have any kind of internal competitions with the back line as far as who performs better, different numbers that you kind of tout over each other as the games go on? Um, not really. Um, to be honest with you, we don't. But there are def I mean, we're definitely pretty critical on each other um, in terms of how we are as the back line. But... Um, I guess I'd be winning the yellow card count right now, so I'll take that one. 